So I bought this watch purely on a whim. Uh, when I went to the Young Hands dealer, uh, I went in there to buy this watch. If you get focus. Uh, this watch was the one I asked them to put aside for me. I'd seen pictures of it online and I'd seen some videos of, on it and I just thought it was a fantastic looking watch but I didn't want to buy it without actually physically seeing it uh, and holding it in my hand and make sure it's what I wanted because I've been bitten before where I've bought watches and when I got them I didn't like them and it's just a waste of money. Uh, so I went in to buy this watch and I'd seen this one as well. Uh, if you want to see a review of this watch I've already done one I'll leave one I'll leave a link at the end of the video to watch. So when I saw this one as well I thought that actually does look really nice there. Uh, the pictures didn't really do it justice. And uh, I, I thought, right, what will you do me for both watches? I'll take both watches, do me a deal. And they did me a really good deal on both watches. I can't remember exactly how much I paid for them. So this one currently is retailing uh, for 1840 uh, pounds sterling. And I think that offers fantastic value for money in terms of what you get. Now this runs the ETA 7750 movement. Uh, which is a good reliable workhorse and many other brands um, thinking off the top of my head Breitling, IWC, uh, Tag Heuer, uh, Omega used this movement in some cases I think Breitling still use uh, this movement in some of their watches and for those watches you're looking at um, three four thousand pounds so in terms of value for money I think um, you're getting a good deal uh, with this watch for that price. If you can say a watch costing only £2,000 is a good value for money, I'm sure a lot of people would think that's uh, quite expensive just for a, a simple watch. And this is really a nice simple watch. That's one of the things that attracted me to it. Uh, so the whole dial is is just takes up e the whole space uh, of the of the case. Uh, so the, the case is 40 millimeters in diameter. Now it does actually feel like a 42 millimeter because of the dial being so big and small bezel. So it does actually feel a lot bigger than it actually is. And it's uh, uh, 45 millimeters from lug to lug. So it has really short lugs. And again, that makes the watch feel a little bit smaller um, with this great big uh, dial. I think if they had longer lugs, it would feel maybe like a 44 millimeter. Uh, and it's got 21 millimeter uh, lugs, which is a bit annoying, but uh, now you can find more straps at 21 millimeters than you could uh, when I first bought this watch. And it's 30 meters water resistant, so it doesn't have a screw down crown. You just wind it as normal. So the crown is uh, controls the setting the time, uh, and then also the day date function. So this has a day date function, which again is really nice. I quite like the fact that it's got a day date function. Most seven seven fifty movements just have the uh, the date, um, so not the day function on it. So the dial is really nice and simple. Um, you've got just young hands, and then chronoscope um, here, and then at the bottom you've got made in Germany, and that's all the text there is on the watch. I really like that. I like the fact that it's just so plain and simple where if you look at this one, um, it's just so cluttered. Um, but it kind of contrasts the both watches. Even though both watches are using the exact same case. So the only difference is the, the dial, the hands, the movement. Uh, this is a, again an ETA movement, but I can't remember the top of my head. But if you watch the video at the end, um, it'll explain about this watch. Um, so on the back, uh, you've got an open case back, which Many ETA 7750 movements do have. It's an okay looking movement. It's nothing too special. Um, so if you like open case back movements, um, it's there. Three to four millimeters of the watch uh, side profile is the glass. Now this is a pexi plexi glass, uh, so it will scratch easy. They have coated it with, um, with something to help it from scratching a less scratches. Um, I've noticed a couple of scratches just up here, but the camera's not picking it up. So if you are a bit uh, concerned about watch is getting scratched they are now offering this watch with a sapphire crystal and it is domed as well i thought when i saw it's been sapphire i thought they won't have a domed crystal because they're very quite expensive to have a domed crystal and that is only an extra 200 pounds so i i definitely if i had the choice now i probably would go for sapphire uh, because it is a little bit fragile in terms of scratches. Uh, I've said in my other videos, I don't mind scratches too much, but on a watch like this, it is more of a dress type watch. So you want to try and keep it as clean as possible uh, and make it look um, clean and undamaged. Some of the watches I don't mind getting scratches that I've got, which are a bit more of sports type watches. This really isn't a very sports type watch, even though it's got a chronograph. Uh, it's, it would 
I'm a little bit more fragile when I'm wearing it. I'm a bit more careful with it than I would be with some of my other watches. So uh, with the 7750 movement, uh, when you start it, you can just see it has a little bit of a jump. The other watch, which has uh, a much smoother action to it when you start the chronograph. So the watch um, came on a stainless steel bracelet, uh, which I took off immediately. I'm just not a big fan of bracelets. Uh, that's the really reason I took it off the bracelet. Um, it came with the bracelet, uh, so there wasn't really much point in not having it with the bracelet because it came with it and it's still got all of its plastic uh, coverings on there when I took it off. I, don't, I didn't want to lose um, uh, the, the spring bars and also when you take the spring bar out uh, this top um, end link comes off so it's not attached to the, the rest of the, the bracelet so that's why I've taped it up so it just sort of uh, rattle around in the in the bag and start scratching the rest of the bracelet. So I'm, just, I'm not going to wear it on this bracelet Again, not because there's anything wrong with the bracelet. It's a very nice, comfortable bracelet. I did put it on just to see. Um, you do catch your hairs in the, the gaps in this. So if you've got hairy arms, um, that's something to look out for. But it's a very comfortable bracelet. It's very Jubilee-esque type um, uh, comf comfort to it. Um, the way it, uh, it it just sort of folds in. So it, it'll, it will wrap around your wrist really well. It's got a deployant uh, clasp, double deployant. Um, yeah, can't can't fault it. And again, for eighteen forty, that's that's a fantastic price. Or, or two thousand and forty pounds uh, if you want the one with the sapphire crystal. I think it's great, um, great value. Uh, I put it on this uh, brown leather strap. I just preferred it on this. It's very comfortable on this. Uh, I, I just prefer leather straps more than uh, bracelets and also I, I can change it if I want I can put it on a black one the good thing with the white dial there's so many dial uh, strap combinations you can have with this um, it's just great watch so I think if anyone's looking for a nice sort of classic -y looking watch uh, and you want something um, slightly different now I don't think this watch is that popular which for me I like um, I've said in my other videos I quite like the fact that to have watches which is not the mainstream anyone can go along and buy uh, a tag Heuer or a rolex or breitling or some other watches and i quite like the fact of having a different watch to what most other people have so i think you, uh, if you're looking for something slightly different this is a great value for money as i said earlier and it's different as well not many people will will know what young hands is um, it's a german brand um it's my first german brand that i've got i actually am thinking of uh, buying another one it's called um, I think is it called a Henhart or a Heinhart really nice looking watch um, so that's something that's on my list of watches to get uh, this watch is kind of preventing me from buying that watch because I'm I've got too many watches which I don't wear um, and I'm thinking I need to wear this one get some wear out of it before I start buying something else and then sell this one and then buy something else. I'm doing one in, one out like some some other collectors are doing before I was just buying and buying, which is a bit uh, a bit silly. Uh, then you end up having too many watches. But great little watch. Um, very gl glad I got it. Uh, it is, I think, if I compare the two, this one still has the edge on it for me. Um, whenever I'm um, wanting to, to wear... Uh, if I had a choice of wearing one of these two watches, I always I always gravitate towards this one. Uh, I like the fact that it's a very sort of racing type uh, watch. Uh, I like the the look of the the dial and just the whole feel of this watch feels much nicer to me than than the other one. Uh, but both watches are great. Really glad I got them, and at the price, I think they they may start increasing the prices um, fairly soon because. I'm just I'm so shocked that they're they're still under some of them are still under two thousand pounds, where you've got other watches um, which are not as good as this one, which are three thousand pounds. Look at ball watches, um, really they're similar to this one. I would say I'd, I'd put them in the same bracket: ball, uh, Oris, Longines. I think they also use uh, the seven seven fifty movements, and their their starting prices are two and a half three thousand pounds. And I don't really think there's that much value in their watches than this. So if you're looking for a Young Hands watch, I would definitely recommend this watch.